Tom McCord already passed one major test as Ohio State starting quarterback going up to Notre Dame, winning that game, leading the game-winning drive with his back against the wall there in the final two minutes. Another big one coming in, though. Probably a better defense. Definitely a better defense, I think. Not that Notre Dame was a bad one, but a better defense coming in from Penn State and an aggressive defense, a defense that's got some guys up front that are going to cause pressure. So we're talking here on Tuesday at the Woody Hayes Athletic Center to Ryan Day about my first question. I had the first question today, and I wanted to know where he feels like Tom McCord is right now as far as being ready for this challenge. Steven, do you think that Tom McCord has shown the the poise and the ability to kind of withstand that pressure to get through a game like this? They also got asked in comparison, and I, coaches hate comparison questions sometimes, but he did go for it. He, he bit on this one. Where is he on the trajectory of his past quarterback? So that's really not J, – J.T. Barrett was old at that point, so I'm not including him in this, but Dwayne Haskins, Justin Fields, C.J. Stroud. All of those guys – I think Dwayne Haskins played Penn State the earliest of those three other quarterbacks. The other two played them in the middle of the season, and he said that he's on the, they, he's on a similar trajectory as those guys. Those three guys beat Penn State and – it was a little iffy for Dwayne in the first half, but for the most part, those three guys looked pretty good against Penn State. It wasn't pre- it wasn't beautiful. It wasn't perfect. They all had moments. Justin Fields fumbled a couple times against Penn State, and C.J. Stroud had some throws. I remember he had that weird throw to Chris Olave where he just I don't he put the ball here and Chris Olave was here, and it was just very weird. But so it wasn't perfect, but it was good enough to win a game against a Big Ten team who's a top ten opponent. If he's telling us that Kyle McCord is there, I believe him. And I think that I said this after the game on Saturday, whether it's his best game or not, it was the perfect game to put him on a trajectory and build momentum into going into the Penn State game. I think he's ready. I don't think he's ready to be perfect. But as I just mentioned, those guys weren't. I'm sure he's going to make a mistake. I'm sure there's going to be an intentional grounding or some weird thing where he doesn't take the sack or he does something weird with the ball. But I am confident that he's ready for that moment. And if you want to say Kyle McCord's the better quarterback going into that game, I'm willing to hear that argument. You know, as it stands, the the same philosophy applies now that applied in week four against Notre Dame or applied in week one, frankly, which is don't ask him to go out and win this game on his own. Like, don't keep – don't do the things that he has to then try to – don't – don't build a hole that he has to try to dig out of. Don't make him do like what USC has done to Caleb Williams for the last couple of years, which is you know play bad defense, which I don't think is an issue against Penn State, or make other mistakes that, that now your quarterback with his just wild scrambling ability and, and playmaking ability can can dig you out of. I'm not saying the common cord can't do that at times because he did it on that last drive against Notre Dame. He obviously stepped up. The flip side of that, though, is I think common cord has to have a better game taking care of the ball than he's had at least consistently through these first five games. You know, there was the two plays last week. There was a fumble he put on the ground. There was the intentional grounding play that was just bizarre. Um, and I understand what he was trying to do there, but it, it's it's on the borderline of, like, is are you going to get the grounding call or is it going to be a turnover? And, like, he's those things are going to be magnified against a defense as good as Penn State and an offense that is not explosive but will also – do a good job of taking care of the ball and potentially make you pay for it by keeping your offense off of the field. I think that's the two things that I'm looking for as far as growth this week. He has avoided making the big mistake that has cost them at any point. You know, he had the one interception this year in the Indiana game where he was throwing into it was a the play got screwed up. It was fourth down. He took a shot. Like I really don't hold that throw against him. So without that, zero interceptions through his first six games. So not really a lot to quibble with that. But I think. And, and you could throw an interception against Penn State. It wouldn't even necessarily be your fault. It's a good defensive team. I think you almost have to go in expecting something like that to happen. So how does he respond to that? But then how does he also avoid kind of the unforced error? And, and Or even when it's being forced, does he respond to it better than he was responding to it at times last week against Purdue? It was actually a lot more about how Kyle McCord looked in the Purdue game and some of the decisions he made and how that played out. And we're going to talk about that more on Buckeye Talk. So get that wherever you can find podcasts and get the text. 614-350-3315. We'll be setting the scene from Ohio Stadium with those texts Saturday morning from cleveland.com.